everybody. Welcome in the name of Jesus. It's good to have you. What a great uh, Sunday we're having here. I feel a whole lot better than I did last week. I looked at, they, they sent me pictures of the new member welcome. And I'm going, oh, get him off of there. <laughs> it was pretty, I don't know what it was. I, I still felt, felt pretty cruddy on Monday, although I did come to the office and did office work. But then uh, by Tuesday, it was great. So thanks for all the prayers. Um, what do we have going on, Brian? Birthdays and anniversaries. Any birthdays and anniversaries? Uh-oh, Amy. Amy, your 40th anniversary? Is your husband here? I just thought I saw him. I was going to ask him the key to be married to Amy Damber for 40 years. So. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, um, I just want to say tomorrow on Memorial Day, um, Dick is being honored for 50 years in the American Legion, and he's going to be presented with a cloak of honor for his service to the house. Oh boy! And he's so happy that you you made it public. <laughs> I can tell that, so we could, we'll do counseling, marital counseling later. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. That's quite the deal. By the way, speaking of the American Legion, you got to take a look now. Um, our, our, we replaced our, our flight, our flight with all the wind. It got, it got kind of ripped up a little bit and, and it was faded. And we did, Bob just put a new one up there. So it's really, it's really nice. I just, if you look at the Facebook site a little bit later, I'm going to post a picture Right where the sun went through was really neat. So um, yeah, that's that's a new one out there as well, ready for Memorial Weekend. Anybody else have a birthday or anniversary? Okay, why don't we stand up? Let's turn to our neighbor. Let's give everybody a really good welcome. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Worthy are you, O Lord, God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. And by your will, existence and creation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Let us with true hearts confess together that we are through, uh, through, those sinful thought, through sinful thoughts, careless words, and loveless deeds have transgressed God's righteous law and deserve his punishment now and eternally. Almighty oh God, God, merciful Father, we acknowledge our sinful nature and repent of our sins in thought, word, and deed. For the sake of Jesus, grant us your forgiveness so that as your redeemed people, we may be fit places for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and serve you time and eternity. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
we begin our reading today, I want to let you, the kids know, especially that the, the kids today, there's a word that we use a lot in today's service. We're either going to sing it or say it. We, the word is holy. And we're going to talk about that word in our children's message. And you're going to hear it in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And I'll be preaching on that, that this text this morning. So the word holy, remember that, kids. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. And with two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The next reading is taken from Acts, the second chapter. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool at your feet, for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's honor the Lord Jesus by standing to hear his word in the Gospel of John, the third chapter. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the dead wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's confess, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, you can be seated. I'd like to invite the kids up. We're going to talk about the word of holy. We're short kids today. Where's, where is everybody today? You think it'd be Memorial Weekend or something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> come on over here, guys. Oh, come on. Well, I've, I've been told that before, too. You guys have a seat. Have a seat. Eddie. That's happened to me, too. All right. Come on in, you guys. All right. I got to show you something. What do I got here? What do I have? It's a bowl, but what's it got in it? Bowls. Bowls. You know what? I picked, I got to tell you, everybody else, you guys won't care about that. Everybody else won't. I picked out a colander. This is called a colander. And I picked one out. And this morning, Nadine replaced it. She says, I don't want people to see the ratty one I have. <laughs> so this has got, this is whole, this has got holy. Today we talked about the word Holy. Is that what it means when we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty? Does that mean he's got holes in him? No. Holy means this. It means that he's sinless, does never sins, and he hates sin. But the great thing about God and his mercy, he loves us so much that he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And Jesus paid for every one of our sins. And so when God looks at us now, he sees us as holy because all of our sins are washed away. What a great God we have. Can you pray with me? Let's say, pray together. Dear God, thank you for making me holy. Making me holy. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. We're going to sing our next hymn. All right. Awesome.
summer starting this is kind of the kickoff I we this is our time I mean most congregations take the summer off you know it goes it goes like September through May and then it's kind of a quiet time for us it's just the opposite we pretty much go year-round but we especially kick in around Easter and we go all the way when we talk about really really doing a, tons of ministry is goes through to about, about Thanksgiving I mean it goes on throughout there but this is the time where we get to do really a uh, really cool ministry of connecting to our community to Jesus Christ. So we say, here I am, send me, send me. And that's why in, on June 2nd, next week, we're going to start that 40-day that 40 40 challenge, um, uh, the red letter challenge that I just spoke to you about. Please make sure you pick up your books. I hate to be an advertisement here. But the, this is how we connect to the community is, is going to be enhanced as we grow as disciples of Jesus. But we have so many ministries that are kicking off today. There's, there were a little bit thinner crowd today, and I gotta suspect that there's a lot of people that are heading to Breezy Point Chapel. That's our ministry too, where we have different pastors coming up to the Breezy Point Chapel at 10 o'clock, and they lead worship up there. For their, This is kind of our outreach ministry, and that really is ours. I know we've kind of always relegated to the district office, but this is, we kind of, we support that very, very directly. We have uh, Dick Becker and we have Candace Priggy who are out there, and they're, they're there every week and they're organizing all this, and that's a huge outreach. And I go out, I'm going out there a couple times in June and at the end of the, the season too, because we connect with a lot of people who normally aren't connected to any church at all. And they're not just cabin visitors, but they're people who live in the area. And it's a great way for us to connect people to the mission of the church and connecting them to the body of Christ and Jesus Christ. And so we're really excited about that. But we have all these other opportunities. We are actually kind of going to be known as the tailgate church this year, I think. How we go out, because we have, we have bean hole days, two Fourth of Julys that we're going to be at. We're going to be at, um, we're going to have a, a national night out here. We have Vacation Bible School. We're going to try to connect some ways to the school as well here. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities for us that are very easy 
for us to connect to the community. And it's not like we have to go out there and beat our chests and, and, and beat the love of Jesus into them, but we simply are out there letting God's love and forgiveness shine through our, through our lives and our, through our relationships. So th- I'm very excited about this. What does this have to do with today? Well, the purpose of the church <clears throat> is twofold. I mean, if you look at the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts when they started the church, they did two things. They, they, they led others to Jesus Christ and they strengthened them in their faith. And they, they, they led others to Jesus by, by connecting to them, by helping them, by, being a, 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 by loving them. And that's exactly what we need to do. And so we say, here am I, send me, send me. But I want to tell you who first, tell you the story about who first said this. The book of Isaiah is an awesome book. And I'm gonna, let me explain to you the, the context in Isaiah. Isaiah is what they call a major prophet. It doesn't mean that he is more important than a minor prophet, but that he wrote a lot. And a lot of it was in, they call Hebrew poetry, and it's very beautiful. And, and he has more references to um, the coming of the Savior uh, Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 14, all speak about the coming of a Savior. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. All those passages were written by the prophet Isaiah. Now, when Isaiah was commissioned to, to, to be a prophet, he lived in Jerusalem, and he was kind of wealthy. He was, he was kind of in the upper class. And the, Israel and Judah were separated King Solomon married a whole bunch of wives, and God told us, says, don't be worshiping those pagan religions that your wives are doing, and he did. And so what happened is that Israel separated from the north, they separated, and then Judah to the south. Judah had Jerusalem. And so part of, and they were worshiping, Solomon was worshiping other idols, and this is after Solomon, but but there was also, there was times where the whole people, they would worship God, but their worship became like a worship of convenience, that he was kind of like your good luck God, that, you know, if I needed a little extra boost, I would worship God, but they also worshiped other idols. And they would actually make little, little idols of silver and gold and have them in their, um, in their houses. You know, for, for, for like, if they ever wanted to say, well, gee, we'd like to have some children we should pray to the God of fertility, or we need to have good crops, and so we'll pray to this God. And they would do this, and God said, you are my chosen people, you can't do this. And so they were, they were being punished, because God says, you can't be my people and have other gods. And Isaiah the prophet was warning them, and he lived in a time that Assyria... Yes, it was Assyria. I'm trying to think of what Assyria is coming from the north, and he had already taken over Israel, just kind of destroyed them. They were no longer in control of their land. And they were also breathing down the necks of the people in Jerusalem. So it's like Canada got attacked, and then they were coming through Ely and Hibbing and all this, and they were working their way down, and we had to kind of beat them back a little bit, and they did. They beat back the Assyrians, but then the Babylonians took the, them stock, lock, stock, and barrel out of Judah and Jerusalem. They exiled them out of their own land. And he's warning of all this stuff is going to happen. But this whole, that, so that's kind of where he lives and what he was doing. And this whole scene here now, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 6 again. We're going to look at that. And he had this vision that um, he said, in the year of the king, that King Uzziah died. I mean, that's pretty interesting. So you can tell the exact dates of when he was writing. He said, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him stood the seraphim. They were a, a type of angel. Each had six wings. Can you imagine that? Two covered his face, two with his feet, and two with two he flew. And they cried out to each other, holy, holy, holy kids. Remember what we said, the word holy, that doesn't mean like Nadine's colander. <laughs> it means that he's sinless and hates sin. And he said, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And what was Isaiah's response? 
He said, whoa, I'm an unclean man with unclean lips. He said, you're going to call me to do this? I'm not worthy to do this. And so they took, the angel took a coal from the altar. What was being done at the altar? They were paying for sin at the altar. And he touched it to his lips because it's kind of like the symbol of him being holy and ready to proclaim the God's word. And so then after all that took place, Isaiah said, here am I, send me, send me. And the cool thing about it is even as he preached, it says, you gotta be careful when he preached about what was going to go on. He also said, the Savior's coming. If you look Isaiah 7, 9, 11, 14, Man, they had, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. I mean, all these things are in there. He's pointing to the hope, even though that there's going to be times of hopelessness, that there is hope. And I tell you what, that message, that message of hope in a time of hopelessness, doesn't that ring true for us today? When you think about it, I mean, I can't even watch the news anymore. It, 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 everything is so spinning out of control that I can't even, I don't, I don't even want to know because I, there's nothing I can do about it because I know it's a spiritual issue. I just know that, that nothing in this nation will be taken care of unless they deal with the issues of the heart and the soul, right? Amen? Yeah. This is so great about Isaiah. He said, here am I, send me. And what did he do? He went on and preached to them, to the people, that in the midst of hopelessness, there's hope. And we you know with this day is Trinity Sunday. And I love how God, the work of the Trinity is kind of a mystery. I'm never going to explain to you like an egg or like the sun. or uh, I mean, because none of those things really make sense. It's a mystery how God can be one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a mystery, but it's a what a thing. But you think of God the Father. He's holy. He's sinless, and he hates sin. And he sees the, the solution to the problem, and the solution is his son, Jesus. And he sends Jesus to be our Savior. The Son of God takes on flesh for us. Jesus is perfect. He's holy. He's born holy, and he never, ever once sinned, and he offered up that holy life as a payment for all of our sins. And Jesus died on the cross. We always say he said it is finished, right? But then he rose again from the dead and he was triumphant over sin, over death and the devil. If that's not enough, then he sends the Holy Spirit. As Jesus ascends into heaven, he sends the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit works through baptism. He works through God's word. Whenever we remember, read and study God's word, he works through the Lord's Supper, which we're gonna about take in a couple minutes here. He works through those things exclusively to point us to Jesus and the hope we have in him. And this is what's so great about our God. Let's read this together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world, into the world, but in order that the world might be saved through And this verse, this verse between the two yellows that, that section, for God did not send his son into the world to what? He didn't do that. And then when we look at the hopelessness that we see in the world, we, we don't have to say, well, God must have turned his back on us. No, God is maybe allowing some things to happen, especially in America to us, so that we are driven back from. He said he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be what? Save through him. That's the gracious God that we have. He loves us so much that he would work a way so that we could be saved. And that's why we are here today. That's why the church is here. You always hear me talk about the church is not just an institution. We're not the next American Legion. Nothing wrong with the American Legion. We're not luckies. Nothing wrong with luckies, but we're not the same thing. We're here for two reasons. To connect the lost to Jesus and number two, to strengthen our walk in the, in the faith. That's why we're here. And that's the mission of the church. That's what it was from the very beginning. And I love how God has worked through you right now and, and through the last several years here to, to lead people to Jesus and to, to invite your friends and neighbors so that they can have the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, the hope that we need so badly. Do you know what that picture is? That's breezy. Yep. 
That's where we live, people. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, read it with me. Here I am. That's, this is us. This is where we're at. You know, I, I, asked, I asked Lynn this week, I said, do, you, do we still call it the Brainerd Lakes area up here, I suppose? But this is our place. This is where God planted us 50 years ago. He brought two dying congregations together in the midst of this town right by the Barbara here. And now we're connecting Jesus. Remember when everybody's at the bypass was going to move and then, oh, all of a sudden no one would come to church? Boy, that's a fallacy, huh? Have you seen how many people now are coming to know Jesus as Savior and how many people are coming to our church now? And that a church membership is not just indicative of what we're doing. It's getting out into the community and looking for those opportunities that God gives us to give him glory and praise. That's where we serve the Lord. God just call, asks us to be faithful in the mission. Here am I, send me. Now, I picked those colors on purpose. There's red, there's white, and there's blue. And I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole Christian nationalist thing, but I want to talk to you about where we are at. We need to recognize that we live in a pagan society and that people feel hopeless. And you've heard me say this before, but it's really important to understand that it's not like an, I, I, I'm, I'm a boomer. So I remember those days where it wasn't like that, but it's not like that at all. People have different values. They have different goals. They don't really consider God, and yet the one thing that everybody needs is Jesus. Man, I got to tell you this week, this last week alone, I had so many opportunities. I had, I had opportunities to bring hope to a homeless couple who scammed me, who scammed me. And I'm going to tell you the story a little bit later down the line, a couple weeks from now. But I, I, I wanted to even bless them even more, even though I knew they were scamming me because of the hope I wanted to share with them in Jesus. But we have poor people. We have middle, middle income people I, that are just struggling to make ends meet. And, 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 and we are, our, uh, our uh, food shelf is going like gangbusters never before. But we have people who feel hopeless because of the economy. We have elderly people that... that Bury their, their spouses, and they, they need to have hope. But there's a whole ton of people here in between that just don't know what's going on in the world and don't know how to make sense to this. And you can't just solve it. If I elect this person, if I get this law, if I do this thing, if we only get these kind of neighbors in our society, if we just get blah, blah, blah. None of that stuff really makes sense because our biggest issue is a heart issue. It's an issue of the heart. We all need Jesus desperately. Haven't you sensed, haven't you guys sensed in your own lives that you're driven closer to Jesus now? That you're in the word more? I mean, in a Missouri Synod church, how many would ever think that people would actually bring their Bibles? <laughs> I mean, we're a Bible-believing church, but oh, I can't do that. But people are doing that now, and that, that we're in the Word because we know something is just isn't right. We live in this pagan society, and the hope that we have is in Jesus Christ, the forgiver of sins, the changer of people's lives. Jesus loves us so much, and when he paid for all of our sins, he can change our lives forever. And that change, as it works from person to person, from family to family, to community to community, that is really how we change a world. I mean, it's great. You can campaign and you can do all those things, and I'm not knocking that. That's all important, too. But the biggest role that we have right now, and I love what's happening in our church. I know that, you know that churches are declining. I love the opportunity that we're getting now to get out and tell others about the good news, the hope, the hope, the hope that we have in Jesus we can point the next generation to Jesus. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a lot of you are pretty old. <laughs> Not me. But there's a definite movement in this congregation to help point the next generation to Jesus. We have lots of opportunities this year, this summer, especially this fall, 
that you can volunteer. And I'm not just talking about teaching. There's all, connect with these families, connect with these children, get to learn their names, talk to them. I mean, there's a reason that we have the littlest kids come up and light our candles. And it's not just because we don't have a lot of confirmation agent kids, but this is we want to connect. I mean, Matt Schramm last week, he gets down on his knees and he prays with those kids when they, before they come out. That's the kind of connection that we're trying to do. Point the next generation. We're here. God has put us here for this very purpose. We're not just here to waste our time. We're not here just to, to have a club and all that stuff is fun. We can have all that fun. But God has really put us here for a purpose right here and right now to point the next generation to Jesus. We have been gifted this opportunity in blood. Let's go. We hung a new flag out in front there. Take a look at it when you leave. We hung a new flag because the last one was getting faded and tattered. And it, it seems, depending on the weather and the time, they last about a year, and you have to go get a new one. And I point to that because we have been gifted this opportunity to tell others about Jesus in blood. The blood of all those who paid the ultimate price for our freedom that went to war so that we might be able to talk about Jesus freely. And if you've noticed, they're trying to make religion very, very private. Don't let what all those men and women did for the sacrifice for our country to not go unchecked, to, 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 to not remember that and with all your heart and all our soul and mind, to connect the next person we know to Jesus. And it doesn't mean that you gotta walk around and be some sort of uh, Bible thumper with, with a sign out on the side of the road, but connect to your friends, your neighbors, your children, your grandchildren, pass on to them the faith. Gotta remember, gotta remember that yeah, you wanna keep peace in your family and among your friends, but all those people who don't know Jesus as Savior don't have a very good future. And we want them to have the hope that we have, not that we're perfect, but that we're forgiven and that God sets us free through his son, Jesus Christ, and sends his Holy Spirit into the world through his word and sacrament to strengthen and increase our faith. That's why we are here. Here am I, send me. And that's enough for today. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We're gonna take our offering now. And if you would like to give, if you'd like to give, there's a variety of ways you can give in the, in the, in the plate, of course. But you can also use that thing on your, with your camera, that little uh, QR code, and you can go right to giving to uh, all different ways. If you're a visitor, you don't have to worry about giving. We're, we, we take care of that with our members, our members support our ministry. So, and also, please sign the record of fellowship, please. That would be great.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the work of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have changed our lives forever. And by the power of the Holy Spirit pointing us to you, we have hope, we have peace, we have eternal life. Lord, we pray that you would use us. Send us, Lord, to those who are struggling, who don't feel hope, that we may share with them the joy and the peace that we have in you. Lord, bless all those who are out and about during Memorial Weekend. Lord, keep them safe in their, their recreation, Lord, and give them opportunities to let your love shine. Lord, we thank you for giving us such a free land. Lord, help us not to take it for granted, but give us opportunity to let your love shine. We lift up before we continue, continually Caleb, who is receiving treatment for neuroblastoma. Lord, according to your will, Heal his body and give him peace during these times. All these things, Lord, we bring to you, praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we do not use them. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this to in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Let's stand up and sing our next hymn. snacks out here in the front. Um, I don't know what else is going on. It's been a really blessed day and so thankful for all of you here. So let's let the, let's get out there and see what, who needs to know Jesus. There's a lot of people who need that hope that we have. God go with you. Mm-hmm.